get a lot of produce, just a lot of vegan meats. I don't, don't ask where I get my protein, ask about my fiber needs. Oh, I don't want to join my family, gathered round a murder turkey. Cause all I want for Christmas is kale. Kale, kale baby. I won't even stay awake to say to Santa. Really, Santa? Harnessing a bunch of helpless animals to your sleigh and whipping them so they can drag your lazy ass around? Seriously? Come on. So a couple of weeks ago, we made a video for Scholar Dondo, a YouTuber who has quite a large audience. She made a video about veganism and we simply responded. And she filed a copyright claim. Yep, she, it was only up for a few hours, so she got onto it really quick and had it taken down really fast. And this is what we're up against, folks. Make no mistake, this is a war. Well, today we heard back from YouTube. The video is back up. So if you haven't seen it, please check it out. Vegan activists are being bullied by these smug, selfish, egotistical, heartless Jordan Younger, Kayla Ritzings, Gillian Michaels, Michelle Bridges, uh, Emily Schramm, absolutely. He goes on and on. Basically what happens is they put themselves out there as being really concerned about people's health and the caring and this is how you get fit and healthy and everything, but they're still promoting animal products. And then you have vegans come in and say, hey guys, there's actually a bit of science behind this. There's actually a lot of cruelty behind this. Let us help educate you. Here are the alternatives. Here's how you can turn it around and deliver this message to your audience. And what do these people do? They block these vegans from their various social media platforms, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and so on. There's no balanced opinions or arguments in there. It's just all, oh, Emily, Blogilates, Scholar, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. The vegan comments are not there, so they only see one side of the story. They don't see the educational side that says, this is cruel, this is killing animals, this is killing the planet, this is killing your health. There's a better way to do it. So when you watch a video and someone comes on with, hi guys, I don't care what words come out of their mouth. What are their actions? Talk is cheap. And people are getting fooled by this, they're getting sucked in. This, as Lucas said, this is a war, this is a battle, and we're not saying it has to be violent. But this is our greatest weapon, our voice, and this is our biggest platform, because and you cannot silence us here. No, this is the information age, and we will spread the truth unrelentingly, unceasingly. And the more you try to block and silence vegans, the louder we're going to speak. Don't you understand? This has happened throughout history. It's another social justice movement. First it was, you know, human rights and uh, the abolition of slavery. And then it was the right for women to vote. And then it was the right for African Americans to vote. And then gay rights. And now it's animal rights, the most pressing, urgent social justice issue of our time. Until every cage is empty, we will not shut up. I can go, you can go, we all can go again. No eggs, no cheese, no meat for me. veganism is enough on its own because veganism is ultimately about what we use and don't use what we buy and we don't buy it's not about taking action for animals and action for animals is what animals need what the animal rights movement needs to grow to strengthen and build to the point that we can save those nine billion chickens 
So let me just give you an example, right, that I think illustrates the point. Say you come across a guy who's beating a dog with a stick on the street. He asks you, hey, want to join me? Isn't this fun? I think there are three things you can say. The first thing you could say and the worst thing you could say is, sure, why not? You're beating a dog, so why don't I join you? After all, it looks fun. I mean, I think all of us agree this is unethical. Frankly, welfarists think this is unethical, right? We shouldn't be abusing animals. The second and slightly better answer is no, no, no. I am opposed to that, so I will not personally participate. And this, Bob, is veganism. Veganism is non-participation in violence. But there's a better answer, and the answer that we have at Direct Action Everywhere, which is that we must actively intervene to stop violence. That non-violence is not just not participating in violence, but actively intervening to try and stop it. And I came on the show today to ask you, Bob, to support us in sending that message to the world. And you asked us, what is the thing that we ask the public on every one of our leaflets, at every one of our demonstrations, and all of our materials and videos, we ask people to take action for animals because veganism is not the moral baseline. Activism is the moral baseline. Save. Save. You ain't never gonna change that shit. You think this white people politics? <laughs> Let's talk about health care, Mackenzie. Oh, Amanda, I'd rather not. It's not polite. Well, did you see that wonderful new documentary about the best sushi in the world? <laughs> of course, now that I'm vegan, I didn't enjoy it as much as I might have. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I often hear in the black community that animal rights, veganism, the social justice issues, specifically animal rights, it is a white people problem. Ain't nobody got time for that! It's not to be concerned with us black people. Well, here's the thing. A threat to justice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. I mean, one of the, the things that I find so very disconcerting is how oppressed people they often take on this stance that because they are oppressed, they are somehow removed from other social justice issues. That because you were oppressed, you were able to oppress other people. And I feel very blessed personally to be a, a black man. Not because black people, you know, we, we, we got it all hooked up over here. We got our big asses and we got our long shots and what, whatnot. Um, no, I love being black because... I'm actually able to say really, really inappropriate things and attack people that are in my group, in my, um, in my class, and they can't play the race card. They can't tell, they can't say things like, oh, wait a sec, you're, you're a race, oh, wait, 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 I'm black, yo, I'm black, haha, <laughs> you can't pull that card on me, mm-hmm. I, I don't care if you're black, white, pink, blue, I really don't care. I know a lot of people say that, and a lot of people like to echo the words of Martin Luther King. Bye. Dream. But my poor little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. Well, not many people actually live that. At the end of the day, we are all living under the same skies. And it's important to remember that and I love the fact that I can say this once again. Black people were considered animals back then. They were considered three-fifths human back a couple of hundred years ago. It's what allowed all of the horrible, uh, torturous, barbarous treatment to, uh, to continue. The fact that by identifying these people as animals, uh, it became acceptable to rape them, to hit them, to abuse them. Because, let's face it, they're just animals. I mean, can you imagine what would have happened if someone like Benjamin Franklin, who, by the way, formed the first abolitionist society in 1775, decided to say that, well, I do believe that uh, the issue of uh, slavery, of abolitionism, is purely a black issue, and I do not have time for these, uh, these ridiculous notions. I am a frugal man, and I would rather focus on the more important matters of the, of the white people. Take a step back and realize that if you really care about social justice, don't separate yourself. Don't say that your problems are, are bigger and better <laughs> because your class is a different class. Realize that your problem is our problem. Like you would focus on your family unit and you'd have the best interests at heart for everyone within your family. Try to expand that. Try to understand that there are other people outside of your family that also matter. We wish you a vegan Christmas in the day.
you can see our numbers are growing. Animal agriculture contributes more to climate change than the entire transportation industry. If she wants to be a vegan, she can be. It's her choice, not mine. Well, you're a vegan. They look after people like you. You know, watching the new Tim Sheep, I'm ready to go vegan, and I'm not even sure what that means. Recent findings show meat consumption has a much higher correlation with diabetes than sugar. The data on vegan and vegetarian diets is looking really good. It was a sobering day for meat lovers. Then there's a convergence of forces that finally make this the right idea at the right time. Well, these are, these are real animals with real feelings and real family groups you are destroying. James Aspie took a vow of silence for 365 days to promote compassion to animals. This vegan lifestyle is sort of the solution to so many of, of the yeah. issues that are going on in the world. In 2015, mainstream media started to bring attention to the growing health, environmental and ethical awareness around the globe. However, it has done this in a very confusing and non-linear way. But what this film is going to suggest is that a clearer trend has been set in the last 12 months from a more grassroots level, with a narrative that is more coherent compared to the one provided by mainstream media. And to understand exactly how this is happening, you have to look at the events of 2015. Kali, thought to be responsible for the explosion of veganism in Israel, where 8% of the population are now vegan. Huge YouTube channels have started to promote veganism in 2015, including Fon Falui, Kalel, Aspen Ovard, Lohanthony, Kiera Elisha, Secular Talk, Naomi Smart, Jack Scap, Reality Changes, Loi Lane and Sigur Ross. Jenna Marbles, who has one of the largest YouTube followings, has spoken of the importance of veganism. Other big channels that exclusively promote the lifestyle continue to grow in popularity. Vegan Gains, who only set up his channel a little over a year ago, has already started to change the face of the bodybuilding world online. I can eat it, but I just can't kill it. Yeah, see, vegans, they got a point there. Vegan bodybuilders, yes, it can exist. Yes, you can be a good bodybuilder. As all of these influential social media profiles have changed, so have consumer preferences. For example, in the US, over 400 million fewer animals were killed for food last year compared to 2007. Consumers are taking to the new non-dairy milks, with these alternatives now counting for 20% of the overall market. You know, the fact of the matter is that the plant-based category in China is big and it's growing quite quickly. Dairy milk prices are plummeted. For example, in the UK, milk prices were lower than water. China is giving up on New Zealand milk products, but we're now seeing a slump in sales from New Zealand to China. Food corporations around the world have been quick to adapt to the new preferences, and there have been a number of announcements in 2015. We started the company to say, if you could start over in food, what the hell would that look like? And we think if you started over in food, the thing that's a little bit better for the body, that's a little bit better for the environment, would taste better and would be, would be less expensive. This food startup revolution has coincided with a trend emerging within healthcare. Hundreds of physicians around the world now recommend a whole foods, plant-based diet after looking into the science. 14 of the 15 leading causes of death have now been scientifically linked to eating animal products. We're addressing the, the political question, but we're also showing that this is an idea that has the potential to truly transform the world. Not as Australians, not as black people, not as women, but as Earthlings. How about that? The question now is, what will 2016 bring? Save!